the most underrated skincare ingredient no one is talking about. Let's talk about it. I'm Dr. Azadeh Shirazi, a board certified dermatologist. I help people regain confidence by helping improve their skin. I'm also the founder of AussieMD Skincare. I want to talk about azelaic acid. It is the jack of all trades, but the master of none. It is one of the most friendliest, kindest, most helpful skincare ingredient. And I just feel like not a lot of people talk about it or maybe even know about it. I don't see a lot of formulations of azelaic acid and that might be because it can be a beast to formulate. It can be tricky to really get a nice, cosmetically elegant formula made. So let's get into it. Let's start with how azelaic acid was discovered because I am just fascinated by this. It's another example in medicine where you know, serendipity happens, basically like Botox, you know, they're using it to treat eye spasms. Next thing you know, it treats wrinkles. Well, the way it was discovered actually is scientists realized that when people would get infected with a type of natural yeast called Malassezia fervor or Tinea versicolor, it causes these white patches on the skin. And it's actually quite common. You might know somebody who has it. This happens particularly in the summer where you get these little white circles. Well, they discovered that this yeast actually overproduces azelaic acid. Yes, azelaic acid is an inhibitor of an enzyme called tyrosinase. Tyrosinase is what is needed for your skin to be able to produce pigment. Well, azelaic acid stops that enzyme from working therefore it lightens the skin, which is a problem in tinea versicolor. But if you use it in patients who have the opposite problem where their skin is forming too much pigment because their tyrosinase is overactive and they're getting dark patches and hyperpigmentation, lo and behold, it helps lighten those patches. So isn't that cool? That's how it was discovered is realizing that this yeast actually makes an overabundance of it. Now it's important to note, it's not like a bleach, right? Because I tell people, I'm gonna put you on a bleach cream. It's not actually bleach. It's not gonna bleach your natural skin. It only targets overactivity of this enzyme. So if your skin is not you know, overproducing pigment, then it's really not gonna affect you, your natural skin tone. It's gonna. It's not gonna give you white patches like the yeast does, right? Because it's a controlled formula, and of course, we don't have the yeast in the formulation. Now it is made in a lab under sterile conditions, but generally that's what's going on when you see those white patches. It's a natural acid that is a dicarboxy acid and it's derived naturally from barley and grains. And it's not the most powerful ingredient, but it does so much for the skin. So why do we call it the jack of all trades? Well, because it does so many different things in the skin. Let's talk about all the benefits. Number one, it is anti-inflammatory. Meaning if your skin is you know, over inflamed, it's, it's red, it's swollen, you've got all these white blood cells in your skin causing havoc, azelaic acid calms that down. Again, it is targeting overactivity in the skin. It's also antimicrobial. It's actually one of the very few ingredients that kills P. acne's bacteria, which is Propionobacterium. It's the bacteria that causes acne. There's not a lot of ingredients out there that can selectively kill this bacteria. So that's why it works amazingly well for acne. And the reason scientists discovered that is they were using it to treat melasma the pigmentation disorder that you see people have with the patches. And lo and behold, they realized it also cleared their breakouts. So now not only does it treat hyperpigmentation, but it is antimicrobial because it kills bad bacteria that cause these problems in the skin. So now not only does it treat acne, but it also treats post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which is the little stains that you see that get left over after your acne goes away. It leaves behind those dark marks. It's also going to help 
fade those faster. Number three, it's a great treatment for rosacea because of all those properties I just mentioned, the anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, it helps reduce the mite counts in rosacea, helps calm redness, inflammation. So it's a wonderful treatment for rosacea. Number four, it's a gentle exfoliant. So if you have really sensitive skin and you can't tolerate glycolic acid or salicylic acid, these are the powerful exfoliants that we love in dermatology. Azalic acid is a distant, distant cousin of alpha hydroxy or beta hydroxy acids, but it is much more gentle. It's a very kind, it's very soothing. It also helps with other inflammatory skin conditions such as perioral dermatitis, where you get these little bumps around your nose and around the mouth area. You can also get them around the eyes. And it's sort of a cross between eczema and acne. I have an entire video on perioral dermatitis, so check it out. So really, so many people with different skin conditions can really benefit from it. And when I say it's the jack of all trades and the master of none, it really means that it's not overpowering, meaning you can use it with other more potent and powerful active ingredients such as tretinoin or glycolic acid. Now you have to be careful with having too many actives in your skincare regimen, but let's say you've been on tretinoin for a while and you know every time you try to add glycolic acid or salicylic acid, your skin gets too sensitive, then you may consider azelaic acid because it is such a gentle exfoliant and it's not gonna overpower your skin when you're on a powerful active like Retin-A or Tretinoin. If you do have sensitive skin and you can't tolerate a lot of other actives, then consider starting just with azelaic acid because it does do so many things and it's a great ingredient if you're sensitive. Azelaic acid is also one of the few ingredients in skincare that's categorized as B when it comes to pregnancy because pregnancy categories in skincare, if it's a B, it's considered you know, acceptable in pregnancy. I never say safe because we don't really have a lot of data on pregnant women, you know, using different products because it's not a population we try to test things on, but it is considered by most doctors to be an acceptable, you know, treatment if you're pregnant. But always talk to your doctor. Every case can be different. So how should you use azelaic acid? Well, there's a lot of different formulations. The prescription azelaic acid comes as 15 or 20%. Now the sweet spot is anywhere from 10 to 20% to really see the benefits. You can get a prescription. The gel is actually gonna be more effective than the cream. So like 15% azelaic acid in a gel form was shown to be more powerful than 20% azelaic acid in a cream. That's why you have to kind of be careful about percentages because there's more to skincare ingredients than just the percentage. Azelaic acid can be difficult to formulate because it comes as a powder that you have to put into a suspension. And for that reason, it can be difficult to have a cosmetically elegant formulation. Now there are a lot of over-the-counter options now for azelaic acid. The highest it can come over the counter is 10%. So if a prescription is 15 to 20%, you can get away with using it once a day. But if you're using a lower percentage like 10%, then you may wanna bump it up to twice a day to really see results and benefit. As you can see, it does come as a suspension and it's cloudy because of the azelaic acid powder because it's it's formulated as a powder in a serum. Now, you have to shake it. This is azelaic 10. This is probably, in my opinion now, I'm biased because this is my brand, but this is probably one of the more elegant formulations of azelaic acid. It comes in a serum with hyaluronic acid and the reason I, formulated that way is because azelaic acid causes a dull or matty appearance to the skin when you apply it like in other formulations as a liquid or a gel even or as a cream it can kind of give the skin this dull appearance and when you combine it with hyaluronic acid though it does make your skin look a lot more dewy and plump and it eliminates that potential side effect of giving your skin that matte appearance. The other thing you have to be careful with is a lot of azelaic acids on the market, they can cause a piling phenomenon. You know, when you put it on, you can start to see it pile up and peel. Uh, I find that this formula doesn't do that. I know that the Paula's Choice 
can cause a little bit of piling uh, when you apply it to the skin. Uh, that's another brand that has an azelaic acid. Azelaic acid also can have a smell to it, like an odor, and sometimes it's just inevitable. I don't particularly find this formula to be overbearing with the azelaic acid odor, but that's something else to know about azelaic acid. So just applying it to the back of my hand, you know, it feels really soft and, and smooth, um, but you do have to be careful with it piling. I would suggest using azelaic 10 onto damp skin and then applying a cream or a moisturizer on top. Other brands with azelaic acid formulations are, like I mentioned, Paula's Choice. They also have a 10% azelaic acid. I believe it comes in a liquid. And then there's one by The Ordinary, which also is 10%. I find that that one has a really strong smell. Uh, but it is a great option because it's so affordable. It's only like, I want to say like $10 or $12. So those are the top three brands that I know of on the market at different price points. I will link them below so you guys can check them out and look into them further. So if you're one with sensitive skin or struggle with acne, pigmentation, redness, rosacea, then azelaic acid is a great option to incorporate into your skincare routine. How you incorporate it really depends on the formulation. If it comes in a serum, then you'll want to apply it after cleansing and before your moisturizing cream. If it comes in a cream, then you want to apply it after your serums or your toners as sort of the last step. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Comment your questions below and I'll try to do a follow-up video answering them. If you have any topics you want me to cover, don't hesitate to comment. Let me know. I love hearing from you. Until next time, bye guys.